Hi, okay, what we're going to do is take a look at the new release of RetroPie. It's uh, version 3 beta 4 now, it came out on uh, 18th of June, that's today. Um, it's had a few tweaks, it's mostly the same as before. In fact, there's very little changes, but what changes there are are quite important um, because there's a few sort of buggy controller related issues which have been resolved, a slight change to how configurations are used now, and also um, the interface when you use RetroArch, the front end, the menu system, that's had a bit of a bug fix. So I've just booted up here. Apologies if you have a bit of crackling in the background, but um, there's a stack of wires. I don't quite know where the problem is, but hopefully it shouldn't affect the video too much. This is booted straight into Emulation Station, and I've used the image here. I haven't sort of built from source or produced the, the RetroPie build another way. It's just written the image that you can download from the Pet Rock Block website. And uh, the first thing you'll get is, after the splash screen that you saw, is this welcome screen, which is an Emulation Station. And as per the previous beta, the beta 3, um, this is now going to configure not just Emulation Station, but also your controller for RetroArch purposes. With RetroPie um, distribution, there's wrapped up other emulators as well, which don't use RetroArch. So there's still some that you'll have to look at configuring your controller for separately, but the vast majority use RetroArch as the front end. And that way, because you can configure your controller at this point, you do it once and all those games are already configured for your controller. It makes things a lot easier and quicker for um, especially new people to RetroPie to get to grips with it and get your controller up and running. So like you can see, that's the first prompt you'll get, again, well hopefully, because you'll have a gamepad or joypad plugged in. Um, I've got a USB one plugged in and it's detected it. I've also got a keyboard plugged in, but um, I want to configure that gamepad there so I can grab my controller and if I hold down a button like it says there, you'll see um, some text appear that tells you the, the name that your joypad's reporting, to just give you a bit more information. So I'm going to hold it down now. And you can see at the bottom there, USB 2 axis sort of popped up. And this is where you can configure it. So this is the same as beta 3, but, um, well, same as beta 3, but this is going to work better. But previous to beta 3, this would only configure Emulation Station, but now it does that a little bit more. So I'm just going to press the buttons that it's prompting me for my joypad. So I've got up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B. Uh, X, Y. Now, when it says left bottom and right bottom, that's effectively mapping. I've got a USB style controller, the iBuffalo, and it's got two shoulder buttons, and they are effectively, for retroarch purposes, left bottom and right bottom. Um, if if you've got um, something that's got extra buttons, you can obviously choose those left top, right top as well. But um, for my purpose, I just hit the these for now, left bottom, right bottom. And because I don't have left top, right top, and anything like that, to get around that, you just hold down any button you like, and it'll say, you can see, hold one second, skip, zero second, skip, and then if you hold it long enough, it just jumps to the next one. So if you have got these, obviously you press them. If you don't, you just hold and press down another button, and it'll process that and skip to the next stage. So we just whip down these, and it'll log. In a moment, we'll drop out of Emulation Station, and I'll show you what this has done behind the scenes. This is, like I say, um, written straight from the image on the Pet Rock blog website. The only difference I've done to this is copy one ROM across so you can sort of see that in action. Okay, the last one there. And you get to the OK button. Now when you get to the OK button, you need to press the, well, the OK, which in Emulation Station is effectively the A button um, that you set earlier. So tap that A button, I'm going to do that now, and it doesn't immediately jump off this page. So Bear with it whilst it just processes all the updates to the configuration in the background. It's not very long, it's about five seconds or so, but you know, just hang in there and um, let it do its thing, and then you get into Emulation Station, as you always do. So this is the standard interface, just as you'll always get, except I've got a Mega Drive option, which you wouldn't because I've copied a ROM across already. And we, there is a lot of questions often asked on the forums about why other emulators don't appear here. And the reason is because they only appear when you copy the ROMs to the directories. So the default ones, and there's about six or seven here already, um, that's because there are files in those directories. But as soon as you put your ROM in those other directories, they will appear. So they're not, not installed, they're just not appearing because the files aren't there. Anyway, the one I've added is Mega Drive. So I'll go in there pressing A, and you can see the files there. So I'm going to launch that, and what you want to look for when this starts up I'm not going to set any of the video options with the X button. 
um, to change the render resolution or anything like that. But it goes straight into the game, but at the bottom of the screen you'll see in yellow text it detecting the controller. And that was purely because we just set it up a minute ago. So I'll press X, fires into that, and you see down the bottom there, device port 0, it found my controller. And we can prove that by me pressing start in here. Getting into the game, and you, anyone who's seen the previous video I've done on beta 3, I wasn't able to move left and right. Now I am able to move left and right, and I'll show you why that is in a minute, but that's obviously an advantage in a lot of games. Buttons are working fine, perfectly playable, the controller's quite happily detected. Okay, I'm getting distracted playing the game, but... Yeah, so um, that's how you fire Beta 4 up and start playing. It's pretty straightforward. It's um, the same, it look very similar to Beta 3, along with the enhancements that you'll see I've put on, on the video there. But it's got a few quirks, or uh, not quirks, fixes to the controller setup so it works better. And what we'll do in a minute is drop into the terminal view, terminal session, and uh, we'll just do a few basic um, commands so you can see what's happened and how to configure your controller if uh, you've got something slightly different. But uh, yeah, that's it. And one of the sections that Beta 4 has fixed is the RetroArch um, configuration. Sometimes you might want to use the GUI interface here as opposed to using the um, configuration files. So to do that, the default hotkeys are already set up. So I'm going to hold down Select and tap X. And I get the um, GUI screen popping up there. Now, this had for quite a while been an issue because it would freeze on this screen. You basically couldn't get past this screen. Um, it was fine in beta 2 and after that, it's uh, which was sort of mid-April time, but at some point after that, RetroArch had, um, had been updated and there's a, a issue with this basically. So this version of RetroArch is slightly older than the very current one, but for all intents and purposes, it's, it's perfectly current and usable and it doesn't freeze on the screen because if I press A now because it says press accept or OK I get into it I can choose my options I can move about with my joypad I don't have to um, I don't just get stuck on that screen I can uh, do whatever I need to do with the controller here it's no longer frozen so that's definitely a fix okay that's probably all you need to see here um, other hotkeys the default very useful one is obviously hold select press start and it quits out of the game that you're playing back into emulation station and you can carry on. Now if you want to configure other controllers you might have, different controllers, you can just put those in, restart emulation station and it should uh, fire up. I haven't got any to hand but um, it should be just as we did with this one and I'll show you in a minute how we get to, uh, how to get to configure that. Uh, that's pretty much it for emulation station. Okay so we'll drop out of this and we'll see what that's done behind the scenes. Okay, here we are in um, the command prompt here. We dropped into the home directory. If you look at pwd, it's home pi. And the configuration that we looked at for emulation station, you can see that if you change the directory into uh, dot, because it's a hidden folder, emulation station, and then list the files here, or if we get more detail, ls hyphen lah. And we can see that a moment ago, uh, we're on June the 18th, and they've all been written recently. Now, when you when you write the image for the first time, the only file that you'll have here will effectively be esinput.cfg, and it's it's an empty, well, nearly an empty file. But these are generated once you configure your controller. You don't. They're only. They're not used for the system per se. They're sort of as a temp. Well, as it says, a temporary process to get it to the controller file, which we'll see in a minute. But an important one is the CS input. So let's have a quick look at that one. If we edit that ES input. Um, okay, here we go. So you can see here that from this point here, it's detected my joypad, and there are the buttons for um, emulation station usage. So I've got my up, right, down, left, A, B, page up, uh, page down, page up, start select. There, that's what emulation station needs. We selected or chose more buttons than that during the process, which are carried across for the games, but this is just the emulation station bit. That's all of this cares about. And if I was to delete that, which it just wrote in, I'd be left with effectively just this running this command. And this command is the part that does all the configuration and writes it to RetroArch as well. So if for whatever reason you really screw up your controller um, config, you could go in here, delete, and this section here 
and then it would auto kick in to, to configure your um, controller again so you could sort of wipe that bit out but uh, that's done now it's done when it sees that is plugged in it will just carry on into emulation station and let me use it as normal so that's that's what we've just created basically that section there quit out of that um, the log just literally logs um, what emulation station does is great if you've got a bit of a problem have a look in there and see what the issue is but you don't need to look in there and I'm not too sure what's in the back file let's just double check um, I think it's created that first time let's just uh, type it right and then we should be able to get in there there we go um, okay right yeah that's the clean unedited version that uh, we saw before the controller was added so that's all that is um, and I think the temporary input file here is just part of the the way it deals with moving the configuration details into the RetroArch controller. But that's all you need to know there. The important bit is a new, very new directory that's been created. Now if we change to CD APT RetroPy and we're going to go into Emulators and RetroArch, go into that directory, list that directory. Now up until pretty much all the versions, until this one, beta 4, there's another directory in here called configs and that is where all of your joypad configs for retroarch would be stored no more directory no more files in there no more pre-generated files um, that were already there that would auto sort of pick up your cart it's just no folder no files it's not used anymore so forget about that configs directory it's moved and the place it's moved to is this one apt so same initial path it's in the configs directory and with all our systems, we've got an all directory. So we're going to go into that one, cd all, and you can see in this directory, there's your main retroarch file, which gets processed for all of your systems. But we've got a new directory in here, and that is effectively the configs directory that used to be up here when we looked a minute ago. So if I change into that directory, retroarch hyphen joypads, and list that, put LAH, let's get a bit of detail. We've got one file. We've got one file because I've just created one controller. So it's literally um, the one I'm using and that's where RetroArch will look for it. So in where are we? in this file here, that will effectively point um, the system to this file. It tells it to look in this directory for the files. It checks what you've got plugged in against any files in here and uses it. So previously there's about in this directory or not this directory but the configs version that we had before in that directory is about at least 15 20 ish files that were already configured which on one hand was helpful because you could put your uh, joypad in it was probably already had a config file so the games could run that straight off the bat but on the other hand it could cause confusion because sometimes there'd be conflicting files in there and it wasn't that clear which one you were using but now it's really clear because i can see this file was created then. There's only one. It must be the one I've done. And that's the one I'm using. It will help debugging issues a lot easier. That's your RetroArch controller file. It, you'll have as many files in here as you've got different types of controllers, which is unlikely to be very many. For most people, it's probably just going to be one. So it keeps things really clear. And we can look at this, just like we look at the other ones, um, really easily. And you can see how it's generated. Now, if you remember the Beta 3 um, video I did, I couldn't move in Sonic, I couldn't go left or right. And the reason for that is these part here where we've got the up, right, down and left. Here it says Axi now, it's got Axi. Before it said BTN, because some controllers it's appropriate for it to be BTN. But now that detection when you kick into Emulation Station correctly writes Axi or BTN. So now this is fine, this is what my controller wants and that's all working fine. You can, the interesting parts here are that you can see there's some hotkeys set up. Um, whilst the right axis, um, so that's effectively tapping right, is plus zero, along with that, another re another use for plus zero is to um, go to increase the save slots, and if you go left, you'll decrease the save slots. So if you hold down select, which is the hotkey, you can then choose your um, state slot to save games with. And you can see the hotkey by looking under... Um, Hang on, it'll be here somewhere. Uh, select there, there, right at the bottom. Right, it's the enable hockey button is six, and the six is here. You can see that's my select button. So if I hold down select, the other um, hotkeys kick in. And similarly, other hotkeys that aren't mentioned here, 
that exist in your main RetroArch file, like um, I don't know, like uh, the menu system, the Argui, which is um, brought up with pressing F1. Well, it's not a great example because you can bring it up here as well with uh, there button two, which is X menu. Um, so any hotkeys that aren't here, you can still bring them up, but you still have to hold select. You still have to enable your hotkey. So hold down select and press whatever your hotkey is. The most most of the useful ones are already mapped to buttons though, so it's no big deal. We've got um, the save slots, like I said. We've got reset. So to reset the game is one, which is B, and we've got bring up the menu, which is X. We've got save and load, which are the shoulder buttons, three and four, the sort of left and uh, four and five, the left and right shoulder buttons, and exit, which is the useful one, which is number seven, which is your start button. So that's what it's written. I haven't got that many buttons on this controller, so there aren't that many written. But you saw that I skipped quite a few. So other controllers that emulate maybe a N64 or maybe a PS1 that's got more buttons and um, yeah something like PS1 or Xbox controller would have the rest of those maps as well but that's the ones I've got so that's pretty much it the important things there really are that the config directory for emulate for RetroArch is moved it's now here in this directory um, and it doesn't have all of those pre-populated files anymore which is you know it's a good thing you can see if you've, if you've not got a file here then RetroArch is basically not going to know what your controller is unless you hard code it in the RetroArch CFG or the system specific RetroArch file which isn't really recommended. This auto configuration is a much better idea. Uh, any questions uh, pop it in the comments. If this video has been useful please give it the thumbs up tick that's really helpful and thanks very much for watching. Cheers.